Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for coming. So as she said, I'm the author of Making a Second Life, so I should give you some uh, audiovisual references just to understand what I'm describing in the book. Um, that is what Second Life looks like. It's an online virtual world, and so it's on the Internet, and you download it, and you install it, and you create an avatar. An avatar is your alter ego, and you can create basically whatever you want it to be in Second Life. And it's a user-created world. So all the objects that you see in this uh, image, the buildings and so on, are, and the clothing, are created by the users of Second Life. And this, uh, this world was created by a company called Linden Lab. And they're based here in San Francisco. Actually, they started in Hayes Valley on Linden Street, where a blue, blue bottle coffee is right now as a startup. Now they're a huge company of about 400 people. But uh, they started, and the original idea was sort of to create a utopian world and a place where if you cr log in with the software, you can kind of create whatever identity you want to make and really start to create a society from scratch. And I uh, was a technology writer for Wired and Salon and some other places. And they were telling me about it way back in 2003. And as they were telling me about what they had in mind about this whole place that you can go in and sort of recreate your identity, they said, well, maybe you could write for us because we're kind of forming a new society and we want someone to go in and talk about what's happening. And so to me, it sounded sort of like an embedded journalist. So it was sort of an embedded virtual journalist. And so that's actually my, my avatar there. And I wear a, a white suit and uh, kind of a, a tribute to Tom Wolfe. And so I'd go in and I'd start talking to people and see what they're doing. And you know, a lot of times they're just socializing, using it to have parties and big dance parties. Uh, uh, Second Life was inspired a lot by a Burning Man. So there's kind of that Burning Man spirit, a lot of uh, naked fun parties and things like that great art installations and so on. So that's what I, w I did for the uh, first three years of Second Life's existence and that what, that's what the book is about. But really what to me the book is about is what you can kind of recreate from scratch you know, with your identity and the, the parts of our human nature and human culture that are kind of going to go with you into what's sometimes called the metaverse. And you know, so you learn a lot about yourself, I think, and about humanity, um, so hopefully. So this is, this is a story from the book about a person I interviewed. Uh, that's her avatar there, uh, the blonde avatar. And as, as you see at the bottom, now she's a black avatar because you can change what's called a skin. A skin is like a body tattoo. And you can buy and sell these in Second Life. And so you could literally change your race of, of, of your avatar that you control. So let me talk about her. And this is a story I wrote called The Skin You're In. Normally, Erica Darian's avatar is blonde and California tan, nothing less than the archetypal white girl of the world's dreams. Recently, her friend Chip Midnight asked her to model his latest skin, not an unusual request, since Midnight is a long-established master of customized avatar skins that residents make, buy and wear, when they're going, to, when they're going for a look that Linden Lab's own interface can't achieve. She'd wear M Midnight's latest skin around Second Life to build up word of mouth and generate sales. I often throw her my new stuff to take for a spin, Midnight explains to me. She's very social, so she's a good way to get feedback. Viral marketing, in other words, at its most immersive. But when she wore one of Midnight's recent skins, it also became, as Erica tells me, almost a black like me thing. She's referring to the landmark 60s book in which a white man attempts, through painstaking but not very convincing makeup, to experience life as an African American. This is because Midnight's latest skin uh, happened to be the skin of a staggeringly photo realistic, attractive, young African-American woman, someone akin to, say, tennis star Serena Williams, set to avatar form. Many gasped in admiration when Darian appeared in public in her midnight skin. Some, however, did not. She found that out after she randomly teleported into a location where a couple of avatars were standing around. One man took a look at her and announced, look at that N-word, bitch. Another said, great, they're going to invade Second Life now. She spent three months in the skin of a black woman. Some of her friends shied away, she believes. Then there were, she adds, the guys that thought I was an easy lay, for lack of a better term. She was astounded at the reaction, especially when an avatar's racial appearance is changeable with a single mouse click. Other reactions were more muted. A couple of close friends in Second Life simply stopped talking to her, and when they randomly ran into each other, greeted her with a polite chill. You know how you interact and something changes and no one tells you? Another friend framed their problem with her in a uniquely paradoxical query. Like, when are you going to go back to being you? 
Darian told me some of her black friends, in real life, they were black, about her experience in Midnight Skin. And they were not surprised at how I was treated at all, she says. As it happened, some of them are also residents of Second Life and play as white avatars. Some of them because there were no, there were no good black skins available, she explains. Others because they just felt more accepted that way. And though she didn't alert the Linden Company to the racist speech directed at her, she had street justice schemes of her own cooked up. She waited for the right moment to spring it on one of the men who aimed the hated racial epithet at her. Listen, she tells me laughing, I waited till he was with a group of his buds. I went in and thanked him for the wonderful virtual sex and left. You mean thanked him as a black lady? You betcha, she says, she says chuckling. They're congratulating him till he denied it most vehemently, which only got them asking why, showed him for the bigot he was. Which was really the larger lesson she learned in her three months within Midnight Skin. Showed me who were the good people and who were the fakers. That is a good thing to know. Being black is the litmus, litmus test for the virtuous, I ask. Yes, she tells me. Thank you.